I've been here 15 years, and you know, I lived all over the South, you know, and I got here, and this, this ain't the South. No. This, this is a different country. I only cook for love. Beautiful. <laughs> because the Creoles hated the Americans. You know, the Creoles lived down here like this in the French Quarter, where to have any idea what their worth was, you had to be invited into their homes. The Americans started building these enormous houses and throwing all their wealth out on the lawn, building these fancy gardens, and the Creoles hated that, and so they lived in fear that the Americans were going to try to get into their homes down here and marry their daughters. <laughs> Take so over their property. They created the neutral ground so there would be a, a neutral place where they could meet and do business and banking and that sort of thing. Okay. What are we having, right. Susan? Yes, well, the these are the crawfish beignets, beignets that are going to be coming beignets. out with the, uh, with the uh, sweetbreads. And Susan, what did you saute the sweetbreads in? It smelled delicious. They're um, lightly dusted with flour and then sauteed, and we have a little lemon caper sauce on them. So, Susan, do you find the flavor of the other white organ meats about the same, the, the brains and the testicles and the sweetbreads, all of the Chuck. very... Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said you weren't the wild I mean, anymore. In the ladders of popularity, I think um, sweetbread is on top. I, mean, I think so, too. Testicle, I don't know where it's laid, yeah. but... Beautiful weather we're having. <laughs> oh, my, look at the time. <laughs> Have you ever eaten Nutria? Mm-hmm. Yeah? I've cooked Nutria. Yeah. yeah. What is Nutria? It's a rat. It is a... Oh. <laughs> it is a, it is a, your kitty it, brought it is, in? It's, 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 um, it's a, a... big kitty. An aquatic... <laughs> uh, basically an aquatic somewhere between a rat and a beaver, maybe? I don't know. Don't it's a rodent. It's, no. a rodent. it's a rodent. But it's a rodent, but, it, but it's not native to this area. Many <laughs> years ago, they had these things in cages, Ooh. and a storm came and blew the cages over, and they came and proliferated. They were from South America, They right? were from South America originally, and they don't have a natural predator here, so they burrow through the swamp and eat all the vegetation, so it, it increases erosion, so they're really not welcome around here, but they are a delicacy. One of the animals that we have saved with the Slow Food Arc of Taste this year was uh -huh. the guinea hog. Oh, yeah. It was so the good. lard hog of the South originally. This is What's that mean? Lard well, hog. The hogs were originally were raised for fat so instead of the They were just producing ones. fat. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, good lean, too, but I mean, good. had to go through the fat to get it. Mm -hmm. And then oh, along labor. came the so solidified good. vegetable shortening that, you know, has a big brand name that we won't use. And, <laughs> right, right. and that completely wiped the lard hog off the face of the earth oh, just yeah. about. Oh, interesting. And a year ago now, there were only about 30 registered guinea hogs left on the face of the earth. Oh, my God. And we put them on the Slow Food Arc of Taste, and a couple of very brave ranchers started a production program with them. Anyway, the long and short of it was that by last May, here in New Orleans, there were enough guinea hogs that one rancher had 19 of them to sell. And the chefs of New Orleans bought up those guinea hogs yes, fast, 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 fast. What did you do with it, Frank? Did oh, you use it? The guinea hog was dark really, and huh? rich and moist. I would love to taste that. And this, yeah. this particular rancher, she raises other endangered animals mm -hmm. on her farm, and they rotate the, through the fields. But she raised them for the purpose of 
also having the food. Of eating them. Well, yeah. to oh. sell them. As Poppy yeah, yeah. says, we need to eat them to save them. Yes. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> because if there's no, if there's no market, there's no them. pig. Right, that's right. The what other farmers the, think she's crazy. The mm -hmm. slow cooking, slow, slow food. Slow food. What, what is that exactly? It's an international movement yeah. that is all about preserving the pleasures of the table. We tell people, if you want to join the movement, like, sit down and eat your lunch. Mm -hmm. Here, here. There is a food from New Orleans that is like a beignet, but it's made with rice, and it's called a kala. It comes Never from Africa. Never even heard of it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, well, because it was a street-bending food that disappeared around the time of World War II. It's on your menu, huh? You're doing? It is? It's originally a sweet thing, like a beignet. Right you dust it with right. powdered sugar, but we do savory versions. Uh, I do shrimp kala. Oh, wow. Uh, to serve with our barbecue shrimp. So explain me, the rice is cooked it, together with the... It's like a, a simple batter with eggs and milk and flour and baking powder. Mm -hmm. And you fold in cooked rice mm -hmm. and uh, whatever you want to put in there. Mm -hmm. Susan, what are our desserts tonight? Okay. Um, we have a uh, traditional, very traditional tarte au citron mm. with a fresh huckleberry sauce. Christy, my pastry chef, also does these really nice mango empanadas. With a little yeah. mousse in the jam. Very tasty. Oh, so thank you. Nice. Had to That's have a delicious. couple of different things. Mmm, so. the huckleberries are delicious. Mm -hmm. So Frank, so I have to try the empanadas. Mm -hmm. I want to know. I mean, we're in New Orleans, and you work with K-Paul. Frank was the chef at K-Paul. Really? Yes. Paul taught me how to cook. I started working with him in the late '70s, and um, went to K-Paul's when they opened for dinner, because they started as a little lunch place. So. Right. Mm. In the beginning, it was just myself and a dishwasher, and uh, the rest is history. No, mm -hmm. no. Honestly. Wow. Um, wow. Yeah. You know, we, we were doing 30, 40 people a night, and then within months, we were doing 150. Wow. But, but it was wonderful, Danielle, because it was such not only a formative time for me, but a formative time for cuisine in America, because yeah. American chefs were getting to be known. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. Paul and Alice Waters and Larry Forgione. Exactly. And so it was a very, uh, very interesting time to, to be with him. Well, they were indeed the first, like, celebrity chefs. Yes. yes. I mean, prior States. to that, you could not name an American chef. Right. Yeah. So yeah. that was 28 years ago or so. But uh, you and I met about 20 years ago. Yeah the food and wine top 10 new chefs in America All right. back in 1988. That's right. You remember what you cooked in that spin there? I made uh, duck boudin. I remember what I did. You made... Uh, and it was a disaster. Oh, oh come on. No, 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 I didn't do on food. Couldn't no, 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 no. Uh, no, the problem is then I, I tried to be smart and I said, well, I'm going to a spin. I want everything to be ready. So I, when I get there, I just have to slice it. So I made a terrine. Uh, it was like a beef shank and leeks en gelée with a little horseradish cream and all that. So basically you braise the beef shank and then you shred it and you put the leeks in it and you take the, the cooking liquid and the beef shank has a lot of gelatin, but you put a little bit of gelatin and put it together. And so that's basically a terrine. Mm -hmm. And then I, I cut it and cut it in pieces and I told that was going to be just such an easy fly. Of course, you go from New York to Denver, Denver to Aspen, and all that. When I opened the box and look at the terrain, because it was so shaken, all the gelée broke. Oh. So now the whole thing was like falling apart. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to remold it and remelt it, it re and reshape it, it <laughs> in order to get it ready. Oh, I mean, that... You, you thought you had the easiest dish, and exactly. it wound up being the I most work. I thought I was going to get away with, like, the easiest dish, and I had the hardest one to put back up. You just never know.